Hi, my name is Alicia Magaña, and I am the screenwriter of El Valz, The Waltz. Um, so the main story is uh, two siblings that are forced to grow up after their mother's deportation. And it's something that happens very, very frequently in the U.S. And I wanted to dive in a little bit further and put that as the backdrop, but make it as a message for a cultural thing as well. Um, while the mom is deported, the two siblings are left by themselves and the younger brother tries to throw his sister her long-awaited quinceañera during all this chaos that's going in around them at the same time. So the deportation and all of that is very true um, and a lot of kids are left behind for that same reason that the parents do not want to take them back to their country because of the violence or the insecurity that exists there. Um, but the story that I made regarding the quinceañera and um, the younger brother trying to do the quinceañera for the sister, that is something that I did make up and wanted to do the deportation as a background to what was actually happening, which is for me, the sibling ties and how they become stronger when things happen around them. Um, you don't really know. But in the U.S., if you do not have documents, um, you can easily be deported. So you might not have a reason. In this case, the mother is working at a facility. There's a redada, which is called, you know, it's when, when the cops or the officials go and just ask everyone if they have papers. If they don't, they put them in a van, they process them, and then they deport them. A lot of parents don't want to take them back to their home country because of the violence and because of the opportunities that they have in the U.S. compared to their home country. So they'll do anything that they can to keep them there. And in this case, the mother really does think that she will be back soon. And months pass and it's just becoming more and more difficult for her to actually make the trip back to the U.S. illegally. I just feel that you, you tend to not take a lot of stuff for granted because a lot of the things that, that I am able to do or a lot of people are able to do other people are not and we we tend to think everybody has these rights and everything and when you see these stories happening where one can be going to work and then automatically be deported because they just showed up on the wrong day and the officials came and asked for their papers is heartbreaking because you know that they, they don't care really that these people have a life made that they have better opportunities in the u.s in this case um, and if they are deported they could face life or death Danny, which is the, I guess, main character, the secondary character would be his sister, Gabby. Um, he is just a young boy wanting to live as a child. And I also wanted to see it through the, his point of view because you don't think what these kids are going through and just, you know, they go to school like all the other kids, they see each other and they may think, oh yeah, we're all the same. When these siblings are actually going through something very heavy is that they're living by themselves because their mother was deported. And Danny does see what Gabby is going through and to try to cheer her up, he tries to throw her her quinceañera, which is something that they had been saving many, many years for. And it's something very culturally significant in not only Mexico, but Latin America. Um, and so in this case, Danny wanted to just give her a little glimmer of happiness or hope in this like chaotic time and sad time for them. So I think it's a very relatable short, um, again, because there is a lot of people that have gone through this in the US, um, but I do want the people that have not gone through it, I would like them to see it with an open mind and just kind of dive in that, you know, anyone they meet could be going through a lot of stuff. And especially kids, sometimes kids are labeled as like troublemakers or, you know, something, and you never know what's going on in their home life. Um, and in this case, again, they're, they're going through something heavy. The, the, the older sister's having to work already. She's super young. She has to not have her quinceañera because her mom was deported. They have to live through that money. The younger boy can't be seen outside because if they do, they might call social services. Um, so a lot of things that start happening that could make kids just grow up very quickly and even become kind of hard shelled towards the world. And so I'd like people to see it and kind of just have a little bit more uh, forgiveness for, for these stories rather than automatically, you know, see it as very black and white when it's a lot of gray area in it. I do believe it's pretty, it just depends how, which country goes more. Um, in this case, I believe it is Mexico, uh, but there are people that go through Mexico from Guatemala, from other places that also, of course, become deported. And I think it's just, you know, bad luck being caught 
without papers or maybe you ran a red light and they police stopped you and saw you didn't have any papers and then deported you so it's just a case of of um of being at the wrong place at the wrong time whenever you do get caught i have spoken with with a lot of them and i actually do know friends you know it, it's it's something that just happens it's very frequent and it's very common to know someone or know someone of someone of someone that has gone to this, through, through some kind of deportation or someone who went through deportation or even people who grew up in the U.S. their whole life and then were deported one day and don't even know anything about their country. Um, so it does happen a lot. And so I feel like it's, it's a big network of people that do know each other that, that know things that have happened. I wanted to show it from a different point of view because I feel like a lot of the Immigrant stories are very straightforward. You know, it's a very border thing. It's they're crossing the border, and I wanted to see it through the other point of view of children. What you know, what what these children could be going through, and what happens to them whenever their parents are deported, um, rather than showing the just the mainstream movies of that, just crossing the border and everything. In this case, the through the eyes of two children. Children don't automatically see the the true danger of certain things. And in this case, there's a lot of circumstances where Danny puts them in danger not knowing how grave the situation is if they get caught because again children children shouldn't be thinking about things like that they should be outside playing they should be doing things that children do and a lot of them are not able to and i think that hopefully this short film will open people's eyes and and try to not just think oh you know the parents the parents think about the children as well i as a screenwriter i do see it i see it but um I do believe that there is, there is a place that AI cannot get to, you know, and that's feelings and that's certain things that when, when screenwriters write and where they come from, I don't think artificial intelligence could ever get to that point. I feel like it'll skim the top and you can ask it, write me, you know, a certain story about this and this and this, and it'll probably get a little bit of everything, but just make it very superficial and never really hit that subtext or that, that uh, emotion that people feel and that catharsis that they, they try to get to whenever they write. So I believe it is a threat, but I think that we can still kind of get away from it um, as of now. Just hang in there and, you know, I know a lot of us don't have sometimes that, that network of people that can help us with things, but try to reach out to even friends or, or mentors that might be able to help you.